In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. What image do these words conjure up for you? Is it the sweet Jesus of children's Bible pictures, dressed in clean white robes and surrounded by a glowing halo? Those who heard Jesus speak these words would have had a very different image brought to mind. The shepherds of Jesus' day worked in a hard, rough profession. Dangerous and isolated, it took them to the margins of society. They were on the bottom rung of the Palestinian social ladder. It hadn't always been this way. In Old Testament times, to be a shepherd was a more noble occupation, integral to nomadic life. King David was a shepherd and a writer of psalms. Over time, this prestige diminished. Shepherds were not to be trusted. They were uneducated. They lived on the borders, culturally and geographically. They were ritually unclean, and their work prevented them from observing the Sabbath. They were not who you wanted to be seen with. Into this culture of prejudice, Jesus proclaimed, I am the Good Shepherd. Why would Jesus choose this image as a revelation of himself? The 23rd Psalm and other Old Testament scriptures give us some understanding of the work of the shepherd. The shepherd's role is to nourish, nurture and protect. Sheep may look cute, but in fact they're totally defenseless and dependent upon the shepherd. Sheep are always in danger and must always be under the watchful eye of the shepherd as they graze. Rivers may sweep them away as they drink. Robbers may steal them, and wolves may attack. Driving snow in winter, blinding dust and burning sands in summer, tangled matted wool and mites that get into their ears, sheep are not easy animals to care for. They take time and energy and will wander off at any moment into more dangerous places. In fact, shepherds were frequently subjected to grave danger as they worked to protect their sheep. So why do we offer this parable to the very youngest children in our atrium? Children who have little or no knowledge of sheep or of what shepherds do. Do we perpetuate the sugar-coated version of Jesus? Or is there something else that draws children to this scripture? The Good Shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Our name is central to who we are. Parents spend a long time choosing the right name for their child. People often prefer a nickname because it suits them better. At our baptism, we are named. Names are important. They are relational. In the flock of the Good Shepherd, everyone has a name. He who calls has a name, and those who are called each have a name. While the children of the atrium are responsive to the protection the Good Shepherd affords the sheep, it is the relationship proclaimed in the parable that they respond to most intently. They often draw the Good Shepherd with cartoon speech bubbles showing the names of family or friends. Thus the special relationship that binds us to God is lifted up. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. The biblical sense of the word to name means to know the true personality of someone. It is not superficial, but a real relationship that reaches deep into the heart. To be called by name is to be invited into a relationship that is dynamic. 
The biblical term for this is a covenant. When God calls Abram, he changes his name to Abraham. When Jacob wrestles with the angel, he is renamed Israel, which translates as one who strives with God and prevails. Following his conversion on the road to Damascus, Saul changes his name to Paul. The naming or renaming of a person is a sign of the covenant. It is an invitation to respond to being called by name, to being truly known as who we are. I remember vividly the first time I heard this reading as part of my catechesis formation training. The environment of the atrium with its handmade materials and the humility of the catechist who led us through the presentation gave me a new insight into a part of scripture with which I thought I was well acquainted. I heard the words anew and it radically changed the way I view God. I came to the realization that I was called by name, that God really knew me, knew me and loved me, not just the person I thought I should be, but the person that I truly am. I came to know, really know, that God in the person of the Good Shepherd would wait for me, even come and search for me, because I am in a relationship that is bound up in a covenant so strong and loving. The shepherd's care is constant, but to follow him is not a demand, it is an invitation that we choose to accept. This covenant is both personal and communal. The good shepherd knows and calls each sheep by name, yet knows them also as part of a flock. This dual dimension to the core is not lost on the children of the atrium. When we pondered about this last week in the True Vine Atrium and we read John 10 verse 16, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd, the response of the children was that each flock was a different group. There's a Jewish flock, a Hindu flock, a non-believers flock, who would all be with the shepherd when the time is right. The children had no problem with this, that the voice that calls us to life calls others too, that the good shepherd knows all and will be known by all. So why in this Easter season do we have a day dedicated to the Good Shepherd? The parable of the Good Shepherd makes us attentive to the voice that calls us to life. It makes us aware of the one who awaits our response to his voice. The parable speaks to us of Jesus' deep abiding love, the shepherd who gives his life for the sheep and takes it up again. All these words speak to the resurrection. The parable of the good shepherd is a paschal narrative. The parable is so closely mirrored in the story of Mary in the garden. She was distraught. Her Lord had died a terrible death, and now his body is missing. She is like a lost sheep. Then Jesus calls her name. In that moment, when Jesus called Mary by name, the great mystery of Easter was revealed. With one simple word from Jesus, Mary's sorrow was transformed into joy and their covenant renewed. As a catechist, I am privileged to walk with our children on their journey of faith. They are ever growing in their own personal relationships with God. 
I am constantly amazed at the depth of understanding these young children have of that relationship. An understanding I only came to through my work with the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I urge you to all take time this week to ponder the words of today's Good Shepherd Scriptures. They may seem very familiar. They may even evoke the image of Jesus dressed in clean white robes and surrounded by a glowing halo. But they are deep words that hold within them the essence of our faith, that we are called into a covenant with God, that God seeks us out in the darkest places when we are lost or wander away, and that our return to the covenant gives God joy. What a wonderful Easter message that is, that we are the ones that bring God joy. Hallelujah.